Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, just a formal introduction. I'd like to say good morning to everyone and welcome to the Fiscal Agent and CPIT Administrator Training for the fall. Um, I am Dewana Ross McCreary, and today we will go over Fiscal Agent and CPIT Admin CETIS responsibilities. Um, and then we'll also uh, show uh, submission processes uh, at the end here. Um, we also have uh, Diana, who is in the um, in the training as well today. She is also our uh, PTD uh, scheduler. So if you see her respond to some of the uh, questions or offers help during the training, uh, that's uh, Diana. She's very helpful. So she, we're both here today on behalf of uh, PTD, and we're going to go ahead and um, get started. So. Um, just to kind of give um, a little bit of an overview of how this training will go. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is kind of give um, division of duties, uh, tasks and responsibilities for the CPIT admin, uh, the fiscal agent, and the building reporter only in the sense that it kind of gives a perspective of what uh, the responsibilities are for uh, both CPIT admins and fiscal agents. Um, we're going to give a timeline. Uh, of events. We're going to do fiscal agency responsibilities, CPIT administrative responsibilities, and then we're going to um, kind of end it uh, with our reports and submission process. Um, everything that we're going to be uh, discussing today is coming from our knowledge base. I'll also do a demo on train.cetus.com just to show you the CPIT admin and fiscal agent uh, screens. So um, if you want to um, head over, I'll begin screen sharing. Uh, just go away from my slides just so that you know where this information is located. And now I should be sharing my screen and we're on support.cetus.com. If you've been in other trainings, I use this a lot, but this is where all of our information is um, as far as our instructional um, documentation and um, our guides to uh, show the information. So uh, today from support.cetus, if you hover over administrator, you will find uh, the on the administrator tab, you will find fiscal agents and CPIT admins. Um, so we'll just use fiscal agents as an example. So this is uh, the breakdown of some of the information that we have for fiscal agents. Um, here we have a, a guide that uh, is specifically the responsibilities of the fiscal agent and um, this one is very similar to the ones in years past it just has the updated dates in it if you've done this before if you haven't done this this is information that you can use uh, to kind of get an, an idea of what uh, the responsibilities are and this is what we're going to be going over um, in a different format today <laughs> but uh, the information is all here if you want to uh, refer to this um, this guide. Um, the training presentation, which is the PowerPoint slides that I'm using today, uh, if you would like to view those, those are also here uploaded on the knowledge base under uh, training presentation. Um, we have the managed user guides for our fiscal agents. We'll be discussing that when we get to uh, those demos uh, later on in the training. 
And then uh, this video is actually from uh, a prior year. Uh, this this isn't the most updated, but I am recording today's uh, video. I'm sorry, today's um, I'm I'm uh, recording today's training session, and that will be posted here uh, once the training is over. And then we just have a link to submission processes, uh, and I'll update that information. Well, I'll discuss that information towards the end, but this is the documentation that shows those instructions. And then we have um, a level five application form here. Uh, as far as the question, um, if we're going to convert the manual over to a quick links, section i haven't gotten that information yet at this time it's the manual on um the knowledge base so we'll look into that no problem we'll look into that but i, I haven't gotten that information yet okay so um we are um oh i was going to demonstrate CPIT admins so the CPIT admin page similar to the fiscal agent page um, same thing. This one is uh, specific to uh, the CPIT administrator, and it's the manual that, um, just like we had in years past, it just has the um, updated uh, due dates in it. Um, and um, you can use this uh, for your review. This is the link, just like the other. Um, same thing, the PowerPoint slides are here also for uh, the CPIT administrators. Um, CPIT options, that process is done in the spring. So we won't get into that today. Uh, that's for our spring training, but the documentation is here um, from last year. If that's something you wanna look at, just to kind of get an idea, but we won't discuss that process. That one's discussed in the spring um, CPIT admin and fiscal training. Um, same thing about the video. This is not the current video we're currently recording that will be uploaded there after the training and then the same uh, submission processes um, documentation so that you can submit your um, your data um, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So this is where all of the documentation is if you want to follow along, um, but I'm going to um, go back to my PowerPoint slides and give the information that way. So hopefully I'm sharing my slides again. <laughs> uh, let's see. And now you should see the slides. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that was just an overview of what we're going to go over. Um, again, we're going to kind of break it up. Uh, the fiscal agents have um, some duties uh, this fall. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on fiscal agent responsibilities because uh, they they have to input the information. Um, so the CPITs will have to kind of hang tight until we go into the submission process at the end. So we're going to tr try to make it um, informative, but also uh, we know that both CPITs and fiscals are in the training and uh, we're just going to try to make that as easy as possible. Okay. Okay, so our next slide is division of duties. Uh, so this is just a uh, table, just to explain um, uh, the, div the, the duties. It's broken up by roles. There's the CPIT admin at the very top, the fiscal agent level five, and then the building reporter. So uh, for instance, right now, uh, we are in our fall data entry collection and builder building reporters are tasked with submitting course and staff data. So at the bottom there, you see uh, data entry, fall course review, expenditures, follow-up enrollment. So right now your building reporters or the building reporters, I, was, I would say, are some, uh, they're submitting their class and staff, course and staff data. Um, once they submit that information, it goes to the fiscal agent level five. 
And then we go into those roles where it's the oversight of building reporting activity. So you're going to kind of oversee that fall course review in this specific uh, collection process because we're in the fall. And then you're going to oversee the expenditures, follow up, and then enrollment in the spring. One more task that you have, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, is the manage CETUS users. Um, and that we're going to get into those screens. But for the most part, your um, other than the managed CETUS users, your collection processes should all work the same. Um, your oversight for your fall course review, your expenditures, and you have to submit all of those collections. When you submit all of those collections, you're submitting to the CPIT admin, which is at the top of the table. And it states that the um, CPIT admin will assist fiscal agents with oversight of district reporting activities. So they're going to um, assist at the CPIT admin level, which means that they communicate with the fiscal agents um, in regards to district reporting activities for your fall data entry or for your expenditures or follow up or your enrollment. And then as stated, the other task that the CPIT admin has is CPIT options, which is done in the spring. So they both have uh, kind of similar roles, um, but this is just a table just to give you an idea specifically of what each role um, is responsible for and kind of how it works. This is an overview of a timeline, um, and uh, it has the um, CETUS data collection and submission processes in it. Um, it is advised that uh, you stay consistent uh, with the uh, building reporters or the fiscal um, agents uh, to make sure that all the steps are completed uh, within the timeline so that your data is submitted um, on time. Uh, so September, October, um, just an overview. Uh, we have managed users, uh, begin coordinating your expenditures, your follow-up, your enrollment personnel, um, oversee your work-based learning, class and staff enrollment data deadline. So in September, October, you're going to kind of have those events going on. In November, you have expenditures. In January, follow-up, March and April, uh, it's going to be the uh, CPIT options selection process. In May, we have our student enrollment data deadline, and then June is our enrollment report. So just kind of keep an eye on the months. Uh, again, we have specific uh, tables with the actual dates, but this is just another um, timeline just to keep give you an idea of what's going on when. All right, so to get more specific, uh, this is this, the fiscal agent timeline. Okay, so um, as we are stating right now, we're in September, so fiscal agents are managing new users. Uh, they need to begin coordinating expenditure personnel, begin coordinating your follow-up personnel, um, begin coordinating your enrollment personnel, and assisting with proper instructional design of classes. Um, October 13th specifically is your class and staff enrollment data deadline. So by October 13th, you need to make sure that you have your class, your course and staff information from your building reporter um, ready and already sent to your CPIT admin. That's the deadline for um, your data to your CPIT admin October 13th. Looking forward to November, um, your expenditures report is going to be due to your CPIT admin, and then you need to oversee your work-based learning and your post-secondary credential collections. Um, in January, you're going to be working on um, your follow-up. I guess November um, should also have follow-up in it, but your follow-up reports are due in January. Um, in April, Again, just oversee UICs and um, MSDS data review and maintenance. In May, you're going to do your enrollment 
uh, date a deadline. And in Ju June, you're going to support, I'm sorry, you're going to submit your enrollment reports. And then again, with the CPID admins, uh, you're assisting with the new user process. We'll get to that in a moment in September. Um, you're the same thing. You're coordinating expenditure personnel, follow-up personnel, and enrollment personnel. Um, also that instru uh, instructional design of classes. So you're just kind of assisting at the CPID admin level. Your class and staff enrollment data deadline is October 20th, and you're submitting directly to OCTE. So your fiscal um, agent and building reporter should have had that information turned in, and all that information is due to OCTE from the CPID admins on October 20th. Same thing with uh, November expenditures. Your reports uh, are going to be submitted you're overseeing the next process. Going into January, the follow-up reports are due. April, you're going to oversee, just like with the uh, fiscal agents, your UICs, your MSDS data, and then you're going to be conducting your CPID options. May, student enrollment data deadline, and then June, your enrollment reports. And then your CPID options are due June 8th, 2023. Okay. And um, I say CPID options a lot. Your CPID options um, is uh, basically CPID administrators are responsible for selecting local programs to receive allocations of funding. Um, but again, more information on CPID options will be covered in that spring training for CPID admin and fiscal agents in the, um, in the spring. Okay. So if you haven't heard enough already of how this process works <laughs> for all of the collections, your fall course collection, which is your fall data entry, your expenditures, your follow-up and your enrollment, um, the building reporter uh, submits the data, they complete and send it to the fiscal agent. The fiscal agent reviews the information, um, completes it or uh, just reviews it, make sure that it's all accurate, and they submit to the CPID admin. The CPID admin takes the information, the data the, the, all for, the, for the collections, and uh, they review, and then they send it to OCTE. If there is any um, issues with data, um, the way that the process would then work in reverse is OCTE would then return it to the CPID admin. The CPID admin would return it to the fiscal agent. The fiscal agent would then return it to the building reporter if that process is needed. But this is just to uh, point out that the building reporter would never submit directly to OCTE. They have to follow the general collection process. So, um, just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have been through our documentation. Again, the, the uh, manuals are up on the knowledge base uh, to kind of lay out all of the roles in specific, uh, what's uh, required and asked. Um, again, if you just joined and you didn't see where that was. I will um, show that one last time before I go into um, my demo. Uh, so you're going to hover over the administrator tab. This is support.cetus.com. You can click either fiscal agent or CBIT admin. And that information is here on the right. Um, so CETUS Responsibilities is the guide. These PowerPoints are located here, and then Submission Process document is here. Same for Fiscal Agent. Uh, guide is here, CETUS Responsibilities, the PowerPoint slides, Manage Users Guide, which we're getting ready to go into now. And then um, in just a moment, we'll go into the submission processes. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna go to this is train. Just give it a second. I'll put it in the chat here. This is train.cetus.com for those of you who may want to um, demo some of the procedures that are um, that we're uh, covering in training today. Um, you will use your my login access to um, demo the train site. So uh, use your my login and uh, you should be able to get in um, to demo this uh, information. But uh, this is just a mirror, this is a uh, demonstration of your actual CETUS application. So this is what CETUS looks like, okay, um, or some, very similar. And uh, so we have our across the top panel here, data entry, admin, and reports. So um, as a building reporter, my access level would be the information here. Okay, um, and uh, I would be able to go in there and add student, ask courses, and then I can submit um, my fall data down here and build a course review. I can submit it to my fiscal agent by clicking that. But today uh, we're going to go under the admin tab, and this is where our fiscal agent um, information is, as well as our CPIT admin, and then manage users. So um, depending on the collection process, the enrollment collection submission, that's in the spring. Um, the expenditures, you're gonna come here uh, to uh, submit that information uh, or uh, this one um, for building. Uh, district follow-up review, so when the follow-up processes begin, uh, we're gonna be here. And then uh, course review is what we're under now. Um, so I'm going to get into the submission processes at the end, but this is the uh, tab that we would use as a fiscal agent. As a CPIT admin, information is uh, basically the same. The enrollment collection review, uh, this is the tab that you would go under in the spring to submit uh, enrollments. Expenditures, expenditures review by building, uh, follow-up review, um, course review is uh, the fall, and we'll get into that in a moment. And then this is CPIT options in the spring. Uh, this will take you to your CPIT options. Right now, we're going to go under manage users for our fiscal agents. Again, I know that we have CPIT admin um, in the training. Um, it will be a few seconds that you can kind of hang tight or just follow along um, as we go through this process for our fiscal agents. So we're going to click on manage users. And this is our managed users page, okay? Uh, one second. And again, there is a document uh, on the knowledge base that has this information that I'm gonna go over. But um, as the fiscal agent, or the FA authorized official, you must log into CETUS. So this is demonstrating that we have already logged in. Um, select admin and then go to manage users. So we've already done the first three steps in our process. Um, the manage user screen allows you to search for users and create new users. You can edit user information in here um, and uh, give permissions uh, assign uh, modules, but we'll get into all of that. This is the manage user screen. Um, just to bring your attention here, um, it has changed. If you've done this before, the screens look a little different. Some of the features are just slightly different, but I'll go over um, the user information fields. Okay, so um, when I go in, I can select my district. Um, and these two districts are what I have permissions to, okay? So as a fiscal agent, these two districts are the districts that are assigned to me, uh, basically. Um, so I would select my district, 
and then I can um, go over and select a role specifically. So we know that since I selected my district, nothing kind of popped up in the information here. I can go over, I can select all users, funding, expenditures, programs, so by role, role specific, I can go under and select um, my users here, okay? Going down, if I want to type into these columns, name, title, phone number, my login, active, whether uh, the person is active or inactive, I can sort here as some of the features uh, to search for users, current users that are in the system. Moving down when it's time for us to um, put in new information, this is the user information fields. The uh, first name, last name, my login, um, email, these are required for an entry into CETUS. Uh, so the ones with the red asterisks indicate that I have to have information in there. Um, the title um, is something that is here, um, but it's not uh, required. The same with the phone number. My level, um, whether it be a level one, a level two, that information is also required here. And I can indicate um, that information there. Um, one thing about, uh, I'll, I'll uh, point out, um, Let's see. Uh, for instance, for like with the email, you may say, well, what would I need this information for? Uh, if you enter the email address, um, you can send confirmation notices um, and uh, updates. So all of this information is, is used uh, to contact the users. Okay, um, then there again, their level here over here in this um, panel here this is the modules you're going to select what it is that you're um giving them access to uh one second so enrollment and funding uh that student courses enrollments 4483 prep 4301 prep so um, you can grant CETUS users um, enrollment and funding. You can grant uh, CETUS users expenditure uh, roles, follow-up roles, and then programs. Um, and that's new program application or submission. You can select a single module, multiple modules, or all modules for a user here, depending on what it is that you're giving them access to. For example, um, a level three user can have data entry access to the expenditures and follow-up modules. So this one, and then this one. And what that would do was allow the, the user to review and edit data reported for expenditures and follow-up submissions. So depending on what uh, you want to uh, give access to, you can select uh, one or all. If you don't uh, have information pertaining to what level one, level two, and level three is, it is in the... Um, document the managed users documentation on the knowledge base, but uh, level one, the user can only view summary reports. Um, no individual student um, access is possible. Um, level two, um, the user can only review all data entries per granted modules, but can't modify any data, okay? Level three, the user can add, view, edit, and update, and delete student data for all granted modules. Level four um, and level three are kind of similar, but level four um, economic uh, disadvantage, economically disadvantaged um, includes the same permission, um, but you can view economically disadvantaged student data as well. And then level five is um, 
you have to uh, go to OCTE or um, um, it must be approved by OCTE if it's above level four. So um, this is all of the panels uh, scrolling down to the bottom, available buildings. Uh, so in this district, the available building is the Gwynn Area Community Schools. So if I want to uh, assign that, I would just click that and it would slide over. So just to give an example, I'm going to go ahead and get some information in here so we can uh, see how this works. So uh, this is uh, all of the users that I have um, in this district. I'm just going to select, to select a user, um, we're going into the instructions now, if you're following along. So I've already showed how to uh, search for a user, how to search by role. Now we're showing how to review and edit user details. So I'm going to click the book icon, and Amy's information pops up in the user information for me. Okay, so I have her last name, first name, her my login, um, her title, email, phone number, and then the level uh, information and modules that she's um, have access to. We know that her assigned building is the Grin Area Community Schools, high school, middle and high school. If I want to update any, any of the information, I can go in and change and update. Uh, same thing with the modules, permissions, um, I can change that. And uh, if I want to clear for whatever reason, that's what the clear form uh, button here, it will completely clear all of the um, user information and I could input it again if that is uh, useful. Um, otherwise, I can just go in and go um, to each and edit the information. Once I'm done editing the information, I can then update user, and that information is then updated in the system. I can also deactivate the user information if I need to do that. So this is editing an existing uh, user in the manage um, user screen. Okay, so... Okay, so my email address is not correct. But see, as you can see, see this sends back an error. So make sure that your documentation is correct. Okay. So um, this is if I want to go in and uh, edit current users. And all of the information is here in the panel up here. I can search it or um, change it by selecting a role up above. Okay, and I kind of demonstrated how to uh, create a new user. Uh, let's see here. That will ha that's what would happen if you clear form. It would indicate that I have to... Um, put that information back in. Okay, so now we're back um, as if we came in uh, for the first time, and I'm going to demonstrate how to um, create a new user. 
So I would then um, put in my district. I would then fill in the fields that are required by CEDAS to have an entry um, in CEDAS. I would select my level, my modules, and then um, enter in the information uh, here as far as the available buildings. Now, one thing to point out, um, it, you are unable to create, as it states here, um, another user uh, with a level five access. If you are a fiscal agent, you can't give access to another uh, fiscal agent. Um, so the level five fiscal agents are only created by OCTE. But once you fill in the information and you select your level, you would then click the add user button down here and then that information would be um, uploaded into uh, the system. And then this is uh, basically three uh, sections of information. The first section is your user information. The second is your access control fields. And then the third is your building list fields. I went over the user information, the access, and the modules. Okay. And just um, a recap of the buildings and the access, the role of the fiscal agent official is to grant all users, including themselves, CPIT administrators and building reporters, access to buildings within their fiscal agency. You assign a crop, I'm sorry, you assign access on a building by building basis. Okay, so for example, in a fiscal agency with three buildings, you may grant a user access to one two or all three of those buildings. And you would do that with the access levels down here in the buildings. So right here, this available building list, it lists the available buildings for the fiscal agency being represented. Okay, the assigned buildings list lists the operating buildings that have been assigned to a particular CDIS user. And you can add and um, remove selected buildings by clicking the arrow um, to kind of move them over as needed. Okay, so um, we've went over that. Just another note, uh, users with data entry in other fiscal agencies, if you have a user that will be entering CEDIS data in another fiscal agency district, that agency's fiscal agent will need to add the user and assign the correct buildings. Okay, so again, this information is in the manual, um, but this is if you run into uh, a situation like that. So this is information that you would be submitting um, now or updating now, uh, giving access to now in the month of uh, September. Um, so uh, this is for our fiscal agents. So all of this information is here. Okay. So we're going to move on um, to our next um, task, and that's going back into our um, admin tab up here at the top. And what we're going to demonstrate now is your submission processes. So you've managed users, you've given your users the um, access, they have then uh, collected the information. Um, and now they're uh, ready to submit, like uh, right now, when they're ready to submit their fall data entries. Um, as a fiscal agent, um, I'm going to go under fiscal agent monitoring. Once I get that information or uh, get the email that they've sent that information, and I'm going to go down here under district course review. 
And as we see, it says fall course collection completion, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do just as I do in all my processes, I'm gonna select my district. And this is the district that I'm selecting. And the building status. So the available um, information appears here um, in the building status. So uh, Gwen Area Community Schools, I can see that I can return or complete. Um, now this submission process, again, is there is a document on our knowledge base. I'll click over that just so that um, you're following along. I'll show you where that document is. Okay. So for fiscal agents, um, on the side panel, the Manage User Guide is there. And now we're under Submission Processes. And this document is here, okay? So it's basically giving a rundown of how you would submit. And this is the same for both um, the CPIT and the fiscal. So they have, it, the link is the same for both. Um, but um, it's broken up uh, by um, access, fiscal agent or CPIT. But it's the same document on both links here on the knowledge base. Okay, so uh, we'll go back to our screen. So if you want to look at that, you can do that. But we're just going to go ahead and demonstrate how I would submit as a fiscal agent my information to my CPIT. And I would do this um, by October 13th, okay, or before October 13th. <laughs> so if I want to view, um, it shows me the information here. I can see that I have a course here, Building Admin Management and Operations. Uh, it's a second semester course. Um, if I want to make any addition, I mean, I'm sorry, any um, corrections to that, if I need to, I can return. This is this button here because my building reporter have submitted it to me. Okay, so if I need to return it back, I can select this button here and that will return it back to the building reporter if for any reason we need to do that. If everything looks good, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click the, com the complete button. Now, as a fiscal agent, we know that once I hit complete, that submitting the course and staff data to the CPIT admin, once I hit complete, there's going to be an X that appears in this fiscal status. And then I can't, it would lock it. I can't make any edits. Okay, uh, we will look at that. I see the comment in the um, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see the available question. Thank you, Diana. Okay, so we'll go back. Um, does the clear form take out information for users that already created? Um, yes, Diana did um, answer that. It does, but the only option at that point is to fill in the required fields and add user. If the form is clear, the user cannot update. Yep, that's absolutely right. It does clear. And then the second question we have in the chat is we have a school that always ends in mid-June, making it difficult to meet the final enrollment deadline. Can this be taken into consideration? Um, we'll definitely get that information um, and see uh, the appropriate um, party here. I'll make sure that I get this. Okay, so um, if I hit this complete button, I'm going to now send it to my CPIT, okay? And as, as I stated, now it's there's an X under the fiscal status. Okay, uh, Diana, so special consideration goes to, uh, okay, you would direct that to OCTE, specifically Joan Church. Thank you, Diana. Okay, so um, 
now my fiscal status is, it has an X. So that building is, I'm sorry. Yeah, that building is complete. Okay, so I can't um, release it. So now it's sent to the CPIT. Okay, now let's say I have CPIT permissions. We're going to go under the admin tab. And we're going to go under CPIT course review. And so this is the screen similar to the fiscal agent. Um, I'm going to select my district once I know that they've sent the information. Again, it could be through email. Um, and I know that that information needs to be approved now. One second, let's see where my information went. Okay, so um, as stated, as the CPIT admin, the process is still the same. Um, once I receive the building information, I can then go in and click complete. And then once I complete as the CPIT admin, that information is sent to OCTE. Um, and then it's locked into OCTE, uh, submits the data back in, in the process that we shared in earlier screens. Um, so, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get a, a course here while I'm working on this to try to get a course to get the screen to work here. I see that there's a question in the chat. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, yes, it. they can contact uh, you directly. Thank you for that. Um, let's try to open a building here. Okay, if you're following along, I'm doing the process of um, a building reporter now. I'm renewing a course um, to send it to my fiscal agent. So this is the process. Um, I'm trying to get that CPIT screen to show up, um, but it is the same as the fiscal agent, but I'll do one more attempt to get that um, screen to show that complete status for the demo. <clears throat>
Okay, I got that success message from Cetus. So my course was successfully renewed uh, at the building reporter level. So I'm then gonna go in and do the process again. Um, so as a building reporter, I'm gonna go in and go under building course review, um, select my district. As we see, it says, uh, please validate. So this is uh, different here, different districts. I'm gonna view. As a building reporter, I'm going to complete, and that information should be sent to, and, and, and at this point, yes, I would send an email to my fiscal agent notifying that I sent them the information as it's stated in the chat, absolutely. Um, and then CETUS attempts to email as well. So then as um, my fiscal agent uh, status, I'm going to go under district course review. And then I can see that I have the return complete. Now, if it doesn't work for my CPIT admin uh, permissions, this is the screen that it looks like as the CPIT admin as well. Okay, so um, I can return it or I can complete it. Okay, um, so if I return it, it's going to send it to that building reporter um, and then they can resubmit. Um, but here I'm going to complete in an attempt to send to my CPIT. Okay, so at this point, again, I could send an email to my CPIT to inform them that I have uh, submit, submitted the information. CETUS will attempt to sub, uh, send an email as well. So now as a CPIT, I'm going to go in under CPIT course review. And again, all of this is in the handouts. So I'm gonna go in and try to remember For some reason, my CPIT screen isn't working. Okay, so again, I've showed the process. It's the same process as the fiscal agent. You would go in and hit complete, um, and then it sends it to OCTE. Okay, so um, I'm gonna change my screen, show this on the knowledge base. Yep, absolutely. The process, uh-huh. I'll show that um, that slide again. If you do have to re re return, it doesn't go back. It doesn't jump the process. It has to stay in the process. If it's returned from the CPIT, it returns to the fiscal agent. The fiscal agent returns it to the building reporter. And again, this is that submission process document. This is what we're doing right now. Again, October 13th for fiscal agents to send to CPIT, um, the process that I just did. Uh, this is all outlined here in this document. If you wanna uh, review further, the information is there. Um, and then October 20th, the CPIT needs to do that process to submit by October 20th. The deadline is October 20th. The CPIT needs to do that process to OCTE. Absolutely. Yep. Um, in the chat, if the if once the building reporter makes corrections, they submit the report again. And then the uh, fiscal agent needs to approve it again and send it back to the CPIT to take a second look. Yep, the process begins again. So this is the submission um, document, uh, just in case uh, you want to review that. That was the process that I just showed. I'm going to go back to my slides to share uh, the process that's being discussed in the chat. 
So this is, again, if, if there's any um, corrections that need to be made, um, it goes back in the process. OCTE sends it to the CPIT. The CPIT sends it back to the fiscal agent. The fiscal agent sends it back to the building reporter. And if the building reporter sends it and it needs to be corrected, they do need to uh, complete that process again. So they need to go in and send it again to the fiscal agent. And then the fiscal agent sends it again to the CPIT admin. Um, and then the CPIT admin again sends it to OCTE. So yes, it is very important to follow that procedure, uh, that process that is the general collection process for all of the collection processes, the fall course collection, the expenditures, the follow-up, and the enrollment collection. So when you come in here uh, for expenditures, the process is still the same. You're going to go under, um, I'll go back to uh, our test, I'm sorry, our train site. Uh, we're back here. Um, so in November and also in January, uh, this is the process that you're going to do. You're going to do the submission process. So you're going to go in um, under fiscal agent monitoring, monitoring for um, expenditures. You're going to go under and uh, review um, and submit. Um, for um, follow-up, district follow-up review, uh, the information is there. So uh, looks the same. Um, screens are the same, so the same process would apply. Um, And then the same under the CPIT admin, um, expenditures, follow-up, and then um, we would follow the same procedure. So this is what you would, would be doing going forward. That's the screens that you would use. And uh, it does give a message here. Um, if you click the wrong link here, or if you want to review, you can review. But it says to validate or submit buildings, please use the building reporter review or the fiscal agent review. So this is what happens if you click the building expenditures review by building. You want to click the fiscal agency review. And that's how you would get back to that um, that screen just like with the uh, with the courses and the same for the CPIT admin. You wanna make sure that you uh, expenditures review. Okay, so uh, that's all of the information that we have um, to cover as far as our documentation for our, our fall uh, training for our CPIT admin and our um, fiscal agent. Again, remember the uh, manage users. Um, I'm going to go back to that tab. Okay, so our managed user guide, if, um, if you need to uh, utilize this, this is here. Um, and uh, this is the information for managed users for fiscal agents, um, if you need to uh, give access to users or make any um, edits. Um, just remember the submission processes um, documentation that is also there um, when you're ready to submit uh, your information to your CPIT for fiscal agents and then uh, for CPITs that submission processes is there when you're ready to submit to OCTE. 
Um, again, we did record this training uh, that will be posted uh, shortly. Uh, we try to post those as soon as possible. The PowerPoint slides that I used, uh, we'll go back to those now. Uh, they are also up um, on the um, knowledge base as well. Okay, so um, this here, uh, going forward, as I stated, uh, this is CETUS reports. Um, before you submit, if you wanna review courses, students, or enrollment, uh, the, these reports are useful. I'll demonstrate how to um, get to those. This is another page of reports that are useful. Um, going forward, once you get your uh, data into, um, into CETUS, uh, it can uh, generate a report. So um, when you go back to, Same um, header, we're gonna go to reports and then building reports for everyone. And then it's listed, this list of reports uh, broken up by sections. Um, so uh, these reports are useful for re reviewing the data that's entered into CETUS uh, once you need to do that. So, um, the PowerPoint slides just have um, some suggestions on uh, the reports that are, are available. Okay, so that's one and that's two. I just wanna remind everyone that as you're putting in your entries and uh, you may run into some technical issues, um, you wanna contact our help desk, the PTD help desk uh, for technical issues. Um, if you need help specifically with policy, that is um, the questions on uh, policy issues. Specifically, you need to contact OCTE, um, Joan Church. Um, so both of those uh, resources are available. And uh, I will um, say that, that that is all the information that we have to share today uh, for this portion of the CFIT and fiscal agent training. I will uh, stick on to see if there's any other questions before I officially close out, um, or if there's any other screens you need me to go back or show. I'll uh, allow that time now. But this is all of the uh, new information that we were going to share. Thank you, Diana. Uh, yep, if you have to leave, if you don't have any questions and you have to leave, uh, we uh, would appreciate if you fill out our survey. We uh, have a survey available for all of our training um, sessions. Uh, we ask that you please uh, fill out the survey. It really helps us with future trainings. Um, you can use the link in the chat uh, to access that if you need to leave before I officially end the meeting. When I officially end the meeting, it'll pop up on its own, but you can use the link um, if needed. Thank you again, Diana. So again, uh, thanks everyone for joining in. This is all of the new information for our fall data. Uh, remember to sign up if you haven't or registered for your, um, your expenditures training that is coming up. Um, if you haven't uh, attended new users training, I believe we have another session of that, but all of our training is on our knowledge base. So make sure you sign up for the next uh, session of training. Uh, Follow-up begins in October. We have training sessions for follow-up in October. Um, so yeah, uh, we um, will stick on to see if there's any other questions or um, help out where, where needed. We'll stick on for a minute, but if you're gonna leave, we have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you for t um, joining and um, we'll see you all in the next training session. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so I believe everyone is um, all set. If, if so, I'm going to go ahead and um, end the recording here. Uh, we thank you for your time and your attention. And again, um, we'll see you in the next training. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you all so much.